quality, I think it's going downhill. There's too many repeats. You watch Channel 4 a bit, don't you, Les? No, I never watch Channel don't 4. Don't you? No, because the adverts, they get me down. That's what I like about BBC. There's no question, but the whole of the television industry is in a state of absolute turmoil. Major change. More and more independent producers arriving almost by the day as the big networks shed numbers. And less and less money actually available to spend on the programmes anyway. So it's been squeezed both ways. And the real question is, is there a business here at all? Well, I'm looking forward to seeing the sort of masochists who actually try and make money out of television. Uh, I've never found out how to. <laughs> you never know, I might actually manage to find somebody who has. Uh, I'm visiting three independent production companies. A big one, a medium-sized one, and one that's currently small. John Gower's business is in a bit of trouble looking at the figures. Honestly, they make me weep. I don't really know how he's even surviving. Yeah. John Gower is one of the great names in documentary film, and I'm visiting him at his production centre in Putney. Johnny, that's quite a place, isn't it? Hell's teeth, that's the, the obligatory Jaguar. I suppose nobody can go bust without one. Thanks, Liz. Hello. John Harvey Jones. Push the door, please. Thank you. Hello. <laughs> Are you the man himself? I'm John Delighted to meet you. Sort of, a sort of masochist squared, aren't you? First of all, a masochist for being in the business, and secondly, a masochist for subjecting yourself to this. Well, it's all in a good cause, isn't it? <laughs> Come Thank on up. Thank you so much for the, for the numbers. Not at all. I was just uh, admiring the, uh, the echoing vastness of well, this place. Well, it's, it's something for admiration, but also for sympathy, I think. What's, not, what's going on here? What's well, this? well, nothing's happening here. This is a production office, but at the moment... Oh, God, this uh, says everything, doesn't you know, it? I mean, we've had... Uh, but, but, I mean, you're not the only person who, who presumably has a production office like this sitting uh, empty and idle. Well, uh, I think most people, if they're sensible, will have got rid of it, but because we own the building, uh, you know, it's not easy to get over. Now, the question is, uh, can I rent it out? And we haven't actually tried to rent it out as a production office because we still live in hopes... In that hopes that the we'll, business will pick up. Yeah, pick up. But, yeah. And there's another... But I, w I would have thought this is the sort of thing that one ran, uh, essentially, from one's home. Well, uh, I'll show you why we don't, because that's right. quite interesting. Why we don't run it from the home is what we've got downstairs. You can run the intellectual side, the editorial side from the yeah. home. What you can't run is the putting together of the programmes. Yeah. The so, editing. so you do your editing here? We do, do our editing here. Johnny, you've got a lot of money tied up here. Yeah, but this we inherited yeah. from a settlement when our, when our contract with BSB was, yeah. uh, was, uh, was cancelled. We inherited this from them. I mean, this is an expensive bit of kit, and we rent it out as much as we can. Yeah, but this is the trouble. You're sort of halfway... You're half pregnant, aren't you? You're halfway to being a, a facility house, and you're halfway to being a totally in-house, self-sufficient... Yeah, I and, and, and uh, we should be and, neither. No, and that's an, uh, those are bloody <laughs> expensive uh, luxuries. Yeah, that's true. This is the the series we're doing on the Grand Prix team. Yeah. And at the moment, frankly, it's the only big series we're doing. We normally, as I've said before, have two or sometimes even three. This year we only have one. We got it quite recently. Meanwhile, all our other schemes are... You know, they've either been, they've either fallen off the edge, or they haven't been accepted, or they're in the pipeline. So or it's this perennial feast or famine. Yes, in the moment it's 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 not feast, it's 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 bread and dripping, 
and, and the jam, you know, we wait for. So there we are. That's, um, well, it's an eye-opener. It's an eye-opener. No, I don't want to sound self-pitying or anything. I don't, I'm, not, I'm not somebody who's, who, 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 who's full of self-pity at all, but I think in terms of the industry as a whole, what you want is a commissioning uh, process which says, you know, they've done a good job, they continue to go, do a good job, you know, maybe we should support them a bit. But Channel 4 has this incredible tendering system. You can't tender for price because they tell you what the price is. Mm. They tell you what the program should be as well. So you might wonder... So what are you tendering for? Well, indeed, what are you tendering for? Perhaps, perhaps over 100 uh, producers will, tend, will, will put in uh, treatments for a particular um, series. I'll give you an example. Tomorrow, I'm up at Channel 4 to sing for my supper. It's a program... They've decided to do a program about outdoor leisure activities. So it happens, we sent in an idea like that some months ago, and we've been allowed, therefore, to tender. But so have at least 100 other people. We've been told what the price is. Can you imagine but the management hours? What a waste of money, talent, effort, and everything else, at oh, both ends. Yes. But, I mean, the other thing that seems to me is that the commissioning process and the selection process is very opaque, isn't it? Uh, Channel 4, the, the commissioning process, is at least fairly straightforward apart from this peculiar tendering process. You, you send proposals into them, they, they react quickly, they send them back, and it's usually no, but you need, at least you get a decent response. When you're dealing with the BBC, it's a nightmare. Uh, when they say no, it's invariably no. When they say maybe, it's invariably no. And even when they say yes, it's usually no. <laughs> yes. it's, a, it's a cross between Alice in Wonderland and Kafka most of the time. And, yes, um, so it's, you know, it Ka is a nice... Ka Kafka speed and Alice in Wonderland variety. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> <laughs> so we've got the one big series. John Gow's a very nice man, but he hasn't actually got a business there, at least at present. He's over-invested for the market at his peak. He's not sure that he can get his demand back. And worst of all, I think he's beginning to wonder whether he may be past his sell-by date. Do you recognize her? Yeah, I do indeed. It must be hellish being in a business with these ups and downs. And here's, a, here's another one. Another small vanity there. He's well, the highest paid clapper boy in the <laughs> bloody business, isn't he? <laughs> I'm off now to see Select TV. They're far and away the biggest of the three companies I'm visiting. It's a parent company of a group of drama comedy outfits. And it's even a PLC. They've been growing fast, they're making money, they've got 15% of Meridian. So I guess they should be pretty professionally run. I wonder what I'll find out about their business here. Select TV PLC. Britain's leading independent is now a broadcaster, producer, and distributor of its own programming. Deliver a wardrobe to Croydon. Our production companies have a record of producing comedy and comedy drama series which attract large audiences for the BBC, ITV and networks and cable channels worldwide. Join us backstage on the sets of the television series we produce. What's the difference between working for a bunch like this and working for directly for the Beeb or something like that? There isn't very much difference. I suppose we get more rehearsal time with the BBC. That's probably right, isn't that right? I think that's yeah. probably a fair yeah, yeah. comment. I think that's right. We get much more rehearsal. Our schedules are a bit tighter. Yeah, yeah. The, ti yeah, the tightness of the schedules is quite sort of heavy. Can I, uh, can oh, I interrupt? Yeah. Yes. Sorry. Um, I've got to go. If you wouldn't mind, darling. Oh, I beg your pardon. Okay. Well, guys would like to see yeah, the set. Right. Nice All right, then. Thank okay, you very much. You too. See ya. Thanks, Bye. So. See you later. Thanks, yeah. Bye. Would you like to come and look at the Yes, I'd love to. Right. Well, this all seems entirely appropriate to me. They've created a kibbutz in a mental hospital, and I can't think of a better analogy, really, for the, the whole of the TV business that I've seen so far. <laughs> this place really is like the original Bedlam. All these people milling around, and everybody waiting for somebody else. But at least they're all hard in. 
The low overheads are impressive, but Sinek's real success has been built on controlling the scarcest of all the resources, the best scriptwriters, and their shareholders of the company as well. It made sense financially because we yeah. Boris Marks and Morris Grant are amongst the best of the lot. I wonder how they see the future. Well, the, prob the problem is having got as big as we are is probably about as big as wherever or we can go. Problem, yes. And we've now got to look at a way we can expand or diversify. It will take on board Morris and up my talent, and I don't know what that is at the moment. But you can't really get much more growth, certainly in the UK. I mean, Michael nice. Pillsworth is a select TV managing director who runs the operation. No, I think in drama and comedy, we are um, up to our ceiling. Yeah, at the moment, really. I would have thought so. Well, at the BBC, for example, we've got 25% of the drama series department uh, production on our own. Yeah. And it would be impossible, really, to increase that. Well, the multiple, I don't actually see where the growth is. Our biggest growth opportunities are going to be in uh, broadcasting in Europe and in production and broadcasting in America. Yeah. So we'll use the leverage that we have from our programmes to get into broadcasting. It's shaking me that even in the area of drama, which has more money than anywhere else, the maximum size of the company is so small. This is never going to be Paramount Pictures or United Artists. So to get away from that, they want to turn into being a media conglomerate, but that's not really building on the strengths they've had so far. And moreover, the graveyards are littered with failed media conglomerates. But at least it's nice to be wrestling with the problems of success. The last company I'm visiting is Clark. They've really had an up and down ride. Bernard Clark's gone over the wheel once and bounced back this year. And here we are at Golders Green Deli, which is the best deli and it's called K's. And I'm gonna show you some food. Bernard Clark specializes in making factual programs and in particular popular low cost factual series he produces everything from hard news to the Londoners. New green, they call And also, this is called schmaltz herring. It's very salty. Hello. Hello. How are you? I'm John Harvard Jones. I've come to see Bernard Clark. Nice to meet Clark. you. OK. Just Apparently, there are over 70 people here, and everybody seems to do everything. Bernard. Sir John Harvey Jones is here. OK, thank you. Bernard is just brilliant. Mm. I wouldn't want to work anywhere Sir else. John. Hello. Bernard Clark. Very glad to meet you. I've just been hearing... What she doesn't do. Yeah. I understand the only thing she doesn't do is your finance job. Um, well, we, we, we're trying to train her to do that. Yeah. <laughs> now, what they're working on here, I'm not quite sure. Uh, no. Administration. They're not quite sure, are yes. You're working on Londoners, <laughs> London, right? Yes. That's a series we're doing shot on high eight. Mm. These are all the programmes we've done. Yeah. Marketing, marketing, marketing. And there, there is your Mavis. Yep. There on the wall. No, I think she's a great woman. She's brilliant. She, I think she's absolutely yes. first class. Yeah. And uh, I think her interview technique is so now, I know it sounds a stupid thing to show you, but look at that. Now, that's the gents' toilet. Yeah. Now, most independent production companies don't have them as good as that. And the Japanese, no. This is the... Uh, this is a, very smart. Well, though. it's a hydraulic lift, and it's... We're going to the penthouse. Right. Um, there are no limit to the, uh, no, I know. To the extravagances. All oh, right, the door's open. So, what we've got is a whole series of situations for an interview. The kitchen. So when we're making films, we can use this for lots of different interview situations. Meanwhile, down the corridor, here it is, you see, it's a television studio. And um, it's also a lounge. And do you know, I don't believe any big broadcaster could ever do this. Could ever say, oh, let's take the penthouse, it'd be nice. Well, 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 I mean, no, I mean, quite honestly, no toughly run business would do this. And why this is so cheap? For, for the use of the studio, we can get seven, eight hundred pounds a day. OK, but then it ought to be full of happy people renting it. Well, we don't have the work for the studio. Right. But, 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 you know, you, <laughs> but we have some. What I'm trying to say is we, yeah. have, we have ten days studio work a year, which mm. is seven thousand mm. pounds. We can't put someone in while we, while we do it. Right. Right, now, now this here is, we go. Now, this is the next stage of infinite right, now, expansion. <laughs> no, this is That's the next... That's your casting couch, no, no. is it? This is 1,500 square feet. 
I believe that there will be long-term requirement for it. It's only £11 a square foot. Do I, and, the, and the landlord wants to know, am I, should, I, should I take it? Well, I wouldn't touch it. What would you do? <laughs> then what am I going to do with the people? Hire some space outside on a very temporary basis. You're actually, to some degree, on the treadmill. You're busily, you're busily erecting for yourself a bigger wheel that you've got to keep running on like a white mouse. You could actually be working out of, out of a garret. But that's where we were. We yes. were in the garret. In an no, old but I don't want you to go back there any quicker than you choose. <laughs> <laughs> this is an advance. <laughs> <laughs> for, for all the, for all the, uh, the whatever. Well, I said to you earlier, you know, you're the sort of businessman who goes bust in style. Oh, no, we not go bust. <laughs> <laughs> you've got to get a bit more discipline, you've got to get a bit more focus, you've got to be more specific in what you're aiming for, and you can't afford toys. But you Toys? Know, this this is our toy. studio. No, this is a toy. This is a toy. You can hire a studio. All right. There were you a few minutes ago asking me if I put 200,000 in, in the company. You could get 200,000 out of this company without even a blink. Everybody else that I have spoken to view the access point and the commissioning procedures as being one of the biggest destabilizing influences in the whole industry. All right, well, there are two things to really right. sort out the commissioning system, right? They're, they're obvious, really. One is we need more information about what the commissioning people are after, yeah, and the other, so that's right, is, is that we need to know exactly what's going to happen to our ideas and God knows what else. So, there should be no more open tenders. Open tenders are madness, because all the people that really know what they're doing aren't putting in for them anymore. They're going, life's too short. That's the people in the garage with the word processor. The TV business is not a business. It is almost exclusively a lifestyle business. The most professional people by a mile were select TV. But everybody else I've met so far is in it for the lifestyle, for the kicks, for the love of the game, rather than being businessmen as such. Which is perhaps one of the reasons why there are as many tears around as there are in the business. I do think some changes need to be made in the whole method of commissioning and in the vision that people have as to what structure the TV industry might have. The business has got to be rationalised and straightened out in some way if absolute tragedy is to be avoided and if in fact we aren't to lose the quality that is still a hallmark of British TV.